Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the B Metals Live Investment Summit today, hosted by Six. I'm pleased to introduce our speakers for today. We have John Wilton, President and CEO, and Derek Iwanaka, Vice President, Investor Relations and Corporate Development. John and Derek will walk us through a company presentation, and then we will be accepting questions live. So please remember, you can submit your questions at any time on the Q&A panel on the right-hand side of the screen, and we'll get to them after the presentation. And as always, this event is being recorded and will be available to watch afterwards on Six.com. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to you, John. Thanks very much, Tasha. And uh, welcome to everyone to this um, update on B-Metals. And what this uh, webinar is really about today is really to give you an update on um, really material developments on uh, all of our projects in the uh, last three months since our last uh, webinar, which was um, earlier in the year. So just a little background um, about why metals, really, for the for those who uh, may be considering a first um, investment into a company um, like ours. Um, really, we we're covering a broad spectrum of um, of metals at this point. As some as you may as some of you may well know that uh, B Metals, we started with really a more of a focus on base metals initially, but then from uh, the middle of last year, we looked to expand our port portfolio of projects to include uh, gold into that uh, that range of metals and we've uh, now successfully uh, accomplished that through the acquisition of the Kazan gold project in Japan something that we're really really excited about gold is a, a real store of value uh, and in the current sort of uh, uncertain times coming out of the um, to a degree coming out of the uh, global uh, covid pandemic will always remain an important uh, part of the uh, global economy. And increasingly, the importance of um, you know, green metals such as copper uh, and zinc, um, which are related to the sort of whole um, green initiatives that are being implemented pretty much every, um, every country in the world at this time. So as a short uh, summary of the value proposition, and we'll come back to this at the end, um, you know, we'll show you through this webinar that uh, B Metals is really guided and led by some of the top mine finders, builders, and operators in the resource sector um, who have returned value to investors over a number of decades. Uh, access to capital, and we'll show you how that's now been um, been increased uh, on the back of a recent um, investment from B2 Gold Corp. Um, the increasing uh, deal flow that we get exposed to uh, at B B metals, especially now opening our portfolio to include gold, gold, and um, being now well financed, really for the first time uh, in the three years that B metals has been um, has been uh, building our portfolio, we really are in a good position now with a strong treasury to deliver on the near term uh, catalyst for future growth and development uh, and increased value in uh, in the company. Very briefly, and many of you will have seen this slide before. Um, this is our um, board of board of directors. The company was uh, founded by uh, Clive Johnson, Tom Garrigan, Roger Richer, and myself um, about three years ago. You will know uh, many of those names, I think, very well. Clive, Tom, and Roger, specifically, who have uh, founded two uh, companies, Beamer Gold Corp and um, B2 Gold, which have delivered exceptional value in the mining sector. Mark Connolly joined us um, about a year ago now as a non-executive chairman. Um, Mark was responsible for bringing the uh, Focola project to B2 Gold in uh, Mali, which B2 has subsequently evolved and developed into a world-class uh, gold mine. My introduction to the team here came, came through my um, uh, relationship with Tom Garrigan on the back of my work uh, in the late 90s with a, a good friend and colleague of mine who uh, was we, when we were involved leading the uh, discovery team uh, and the uh, resource development team for the Ochicolo Gold Project in uh, Namibia, another highly successful operation that B2 has put into production. We have uh, Kristen Reinertsen, a very efficient uh, CFO and corporate secretary based in Vancouver. With, uh, with Derek, who you'll hear from later. Um, and again, that fits with our company culture in uh, using uh, efficient people, keeping the overheads low and focusing money on the ground 
money into the project uh, investments. On our more advanced project uh, evaluations, and specifically our South Mountain project in Idaho, I spend a lot of uh, time interacting with Dennis Sansbury. Dennis has really been a core part of the B2 team, responsible for designing and building and implementing their um, mining operations across the world. And uh, during my time before B-Metals, when I was with uh, Antofagasta PLC, our go-to external consultant was uh, Dr. Richard Salito, based in London here in the UK. Um, and uh, he kindly agreed to join us as an advisor when we started uh, B-Metals. And uh, you know his insights and experience, uh, truly our world class, added a huge amount of value already to our South Mountain understanding on the geology and the mineral exploration side there. And as you will hear about later, also um, fundamentally added value to the from his experience to our um, start of our gold exploration uh, in Japan. So if we were to use one slide to capture the uh, sort of value that we see in the in the team and the company here, we would probably use this one slide. It shows the um, value creation through uh, discovery and building of um, mining operations across the world through both uh, Beamer Gold and B2 Gold. Uh, and we see B Metals as being the third company coming out of that sort of stable of um, cornerstone uh, directors uh, and investors. Important to say at this time as well is that that um, very strong team of, um, of uh, directors and advisors are very much engaged with, uh, with B Metals. We have very regular update calls Everyone is part of the uh, guidance on the decision making, um, and that's a very important um, value for the company. So on the back of our gold acquisition, which is now um, now closed uh, for the uh, high quality gold projects in uh, Japan, that uh, culminated in the uh, private, private placement of 7.5 million Canadian dollars from B2 Gold. And from the first time that puts B2 in the registry of the company at approximately the 19 percent um, uh, level. That sort of um, was seen as a very good val validation. And we were very proud of that in uh, B Metals validation of the uh, management team of the company and the value that we um, already created uh, in this business uh, through careful, careful deployment of, um, of uh, exploration funding. Uh, and advancing the uh, portfolio of existing projects. It also provides uh, B2 with exposure to projects which maybe initially look a little bit uh, on the uh, more modest scale side, but have the potential to, um, to expand with uh, good exploration and uh, project um, development. Really, this is an important slide for us and the sort of links to the uh, tagline of this um, webinar and it shows that we're really driven by uh, geology, prospectivity, and opportunity. To, to grow a company such as ours in a relatively short period of time, we have to be open to, um, to working in a number of uh, regions across the world, and that we are now doing. Uh, with our initial project, uh, as some of you may remember, starts with the uh, tier one focused copper exploration that we're doing in the northwestern extensions of the uh, Zambian copper belt one of my former Antofagasta um, exploration properties. We then brought in the, um, under an option agreement, the more advanced South Mountain project, where we built a very good um, relationship with the optionees of that property, um, put in some of our own staff, and that's really done well. And we'll, we'll uh, show you the uh, value creation there with the updated uh, mineral resource estimate that we put out uh, just this morning. And thirdly, now the exciting gold exploration potential of our Kazan acquisition in Japan. So as uh, the entry into gold is new for us, we'll start with that project. And really what we've done here is we've been able to acquire a very uh, highly perspective uh, portfolio of gold properties in Japan. And um, a number of those properties uh, were selected by uh, part of the uh, B2 team when Japan was opening its doors for the first time to direct uh, foreign investment in, in gold exploration. Those properties have been selected both through their prospectivity, but also projects that the team felt at that time 
could have the potential to be quickly put into a high grade, probably underground um, mining type scenarios. Two other main uh, competitors um, in the um, in the Japan sort of gold exploration uh, sector at this time, uh, basically a company called Japan Gold and Irvine Resources um, that have Barrick and uh, Newmont uh, as backers in those um, in those businesses. And obviously, as you're hearing about now, really we have B2 Gold as um, a backer in uh, our gold exploration business there also. So that gives you an indication of the pedigree of the um, of the uh, terrain in Japan, with those sort of uh, major gold producers all being interested in getting exposure to exploration in that uh, in that arena. So one of the main drivers for that, and really the indication, uh, another indication of the pedigree of the um, of the Japan uh, gold uh, scene, is the Hishikari gold mine which has been a, a long-standing a large uh, gold producer uh, from inception, probably in excess of uh, 8 million ounces of gold. And very importantly, a very high-grade producer, one of the world's um, most highest-grade uh, producers in the range of 30 to 40 uh, grams per ton. You know, that's obviously a big driver for the large corporations, um, B2 Gold and ourselves, to be exposed to these um, young gold, um, gold deposits in um, in Japan. So this is a little little bit of a zoom in on our, our three projects that we have on Akaidu. Uh, and one of the main focuses for us in the early stages of rolling out now our exploration campaign will be the Kato project. That was um, explored uh, in the 1990s um, by one of the uh, Japanese agencies. And coincidentally, uh, during that time in the 1990s, one of our advisors, uh, Richard Salito, was involved in that exploration and, in fact, was literally at the drill rig while that uh, early um, first drilling of the Cato project uh, was evolving. And at that time, he already liked the geology that he was seeing. There's certain uh, geological characteristics there that, that show us that the full column of potential uh, mineralized uh, stratigraphy is, is preserved, often a problem with exploration for these sort of um, this style of gold mineralization. And obviously the fact that we they were returning high grade um, gold intercepts. The, the uh, project has been um, has been tested by further drilling in more recent recent years uh, by uh, B2 Gold, working through the uh, local company that we have now acquired called uh, Kazan Resources. Also encouraging results coming out of that um, project, showing a broader, lower grade envelope, but importantly, with higher grade uh, zones of mineralization uh, within that um, overall um, drill intercepts. So one thing we'll be looking to do now is to um, fully assimilate that um, data, build a three-dimensional model, and that will naturally deliver targets for further um, drill testing. We're currently in um, negotiations with a um, with a major international um, drilling company, which will um, allow us to uh, secure um, good uh, right suited equipment for the exploration of this um, of this project, and also a company that's had exposure with into drilling in this part of uh, Japan. There are some relatively difficult uh, ground ground conditions related to the alteration. Uh, around the uh, mineralization, which in itself is, um, is an encouraging sign in a way. So really the most important news that we've had to come out uh, just this morning is really an update on our uh, exploration and development project in, in Idaho. This is a project, uh, some of you will remember, we really like the address of this project. We're down in the southwestern uh, corner there of Idaho. Idaho is a mining, mining friendly um, state. We like the um, relatively modest but uh, high grade nature of this mineralization. The fact that the project is located on um, private land, which means that uh, we won't experience uh, too many hurdles in terms of permitting for a potential mining operation. And what we can now demonstrate as per our news release this morning 
is we've had great success in expanding the resource space, which is one of our key objectives um, when we first got involved on this, um, on this project about two years ago. Bearing in mind, we've had um, some relatively um, confined periods of drilling where we've been underground um, drilling very, um, very accurately uh, through two phases in 2019 and 2020. Um, and that leads now to the upgraded uh, mineral resource that we put out today, where we've achieved a 21% increase in the uh, measured and integrated uh, resource category and a 130% increase in the inferred. That was crit critical to us because that builds now a sort of all-in uh, potential resource base, base that's very close to uh, 1 million tons uh, of, um, of material. And this we will now plug into our ongoing uh, PEA study that, um, that started last month. Really encouraging results as well in the fact is that while we've also increased the um, scale and the footprint of the deposit through that focused underground drilling, we've been able to maintain the um, high grade nature of this mineralization. So we're looking here at, um, at um, you know, material that's uh, between uh, 20 to 18% uh, zinc equivalent grades. Um, so very, very good uh, polymetallic mineralization. High grade um, nature of the zinc mineralization itself, but also a large component of value coming in from the significant uh, silver and gold credit specifically in the DMEA type uh, mineralization, where we've extended um, the most, uh, the largest part of the resource um, through uh, deeper drilling down plunge on the DMEA zone. We've also identified what we call the Texas West zone, which is a more SCARN hosted uh, type of uh, mineralization as opposed to the DMEA, which is predominantly massive sulfide. In Texas West, what we deal with there is generally higher copper grades uh, with a significant uh, silver credit. And then further east of, um, of the Texas zone, the Texas East zone, um, that mineralization is more typical of the metal content of the DMEA zone. So what we typically see there is high grade copper, silver, and again, a gold credit coming into that mineralization with generally lower um, copper values. So really pleased with these results. We're looking forward now to integrating these into the ongoing uh, PEA study. Um, and an important thing that we, um, you know, we've learned through this drilling was that we are getting a good degree of predictability um, from one phase to the other. So we managed to intersect the mineralization that we saw in the 2019, predict where we could do infill holes, and that, that sort of results uh, hung together. As we've now identified, this mineralization style is really a carbonate replacement style of mineralization, not predominantly the scarn that we thought it was when we first got involved here. That gives us the, um, the sense that there's a lot more ultimate upside on the scale of this deposit. And in fact, in that red ellipse on the, what we call the northern limb of the deposit there, that was identified by prospectors back in uh, 1904 because of high grade silver mineralization at surface and it's not yet been tested uh, by um, drilling for the polymetallic mineralization um, underneath that uh, high-grade silver. Nonetheless, our um, main target at this point is to build our um, mineral resource in that underground situation, uh, which can allow us to, to get ourselves into a um, development situation for a uh, modest scale initially, but high-grade uh, mining operation. As I mentioned, uh, we're currently um, got a PEA study that's ongoing, um, you know, uh, biweekly uh, project meetings with a very experienced team that we've put together with input from our own uh, consultants and advisors. Uh, and we're currently completing also um, metallurgical test work that will build upon the existing uh, test work on the project that was completed in uh, 2014 and uh, 2000. 15. So now to give you an update um, on the uh, Pangeni project, our copper, copper exploration uh, in Zambia. We're out here in uh, the northwest part of the extension of the uh, Zambian copper belt. 
exploring underneath the uh, Kalahari sand cover. As many of you will have heard me say before, a similar general idea to how we discovered that uh, Ochocolo gold project in Namibia, where we were exploring there again in a covered terrain, looking at geophysical targets, drilling through that cover, getting bedrock geology and geochemistry, and then following up on those positive results. The Zambian copper belt has got a great uh, pedigree of tier one scale and grade um, deposits. We're about 130 kilometers um, to the southwest of the Sentinel mine of First Quantum. Um, and another development here has been in the last month, you will have seen the news releases. We have brought uh, Jogmec, uh, the large um, Japanese government agency, in as a partner on this project. And they are currently in the uh, process of investing $1.5 million into the exploration of this uh, project. Thereafter, we will um, proceed with the exploration on a pro rata funding basis. Um, good to have a really a real um, first first um, first quality uh, group such as Jogbeck to come in, see the value of this project, um, and share with us in some of the early stage exploration risk on this uh, project. Our recent news release here was um, related to the um, field season in 2020. We drilled some um, important holes as large step outs, both air core and then follow up uh, core drilling from positive results on the D prospect specifically uh, that we achieved in uh, 2019. What that does is it now creates a large footprint of this mineralization underneath the um, thin Kalahari um, cover. That green ellipsoid really outlines an area that's probably less than uh, 24 meters average sand cover thickness. Um, and now what we're seeing is there's a, an 850 meter separation between where we're getting meaningful widths. These are basically true width type intersections um, in the uh, sort of 0.45 to 0.5 percent copper range. So really quite exciting results, bearing in mind here that there's no outcrop, there's no, um, no way to do easy soil sampling. So we have to rely on geophysical interpretation, uh, first doing shallow. Um, air core drilling, punch holes through that sand cover to get the bedrock uh, geochemistry. And quite obviously, based on these results, one of the new, uh, one of the first things we will be doing in the uh, upcoming uh, field exploration to be rolled out at the end of this, uh, starting the end of this month, will be to do infill and further step out drilling um, through the sand cover in this area to try and scope the potential of this um, really encouraging results that we're seeing, um, seeing to date. There's a timeline for the, for the project where we are now bringing in the uh, JOGMEC uh, investment. Um, and we will be starting that field uh, exploration, as I mentioned, uh, by, the, um, by the end of May. That'll include drilling at the um, Southwest target um, and the D prospect and also test, testing a number of other prospects on the um, targets on the property um, yet to be tested. But really encouraging an overall sense of the value um, we're seeing. We're seeing the right geological relationships known to host um, mines in the nearby with the um, alteration mineral kyanite associated with the uh, copper mineral chalcopyrite. So obviously the recent um, investment from B2 Gold uh, and the acquisition of the Kazan Gold properties in, uh, in Japan has been really topical. Um, something investors were really looking for us to do uh, and we've delivered it on that now. And I'll uh, hand over to Derek uh, to give you a bit of an update on where we are in terms of our corporate structure and the current, um, the current uh, investor base of the, um, of the company. Thanks, Sean. Uh, actually, in case anybody's looking at their ticker screen, uh, I see that we've traded about 2.7 million shares as we speak. And uh, I can tell you right now that the institutional chart needs to be updated a little bit. So we, we just brought in a new large institution. Um, can't say any names, but that same institution is involved with B2 Gold as well. So that's the type of uh, relationship we have. And I think that. Um, we're starting to see some of the uh, the shareholders from B2 
see the value and and see that this is an early stage company that they can hop on board with and help uh, and help us grow and so we're starting to see some of those new larger uh, institutions get into the stock and um, insiders of course own a very large portion and that continues to grow in fact because uh, everybody uh, including john has just bought more stock so uh, we have great ownership and continue to see that on the share structure side uh, we're now up to 175 million uh, shares outstanding and uh, our market cap has increased about, about 67 million what's important here is we now have 11 million dollars in the bank so that's the most cash we've ever had which means that we're fully funded uh, to do all the exploration programs and uh, the pea for our south mountain project this year so we've never really been in a better uh, situation financially and of course, with B2 Gold as our, our largest shareholder now, uh, we have that support to, to go forward as well. Back to you, John. Thanks, Derek. So really to summarize where we are, to come back to the, um, the value proposition here for uh, any new potential investors and current investors, you know, what you're getting with your investment uh, or pending investments in, um, in B Metals is you're getting a company that's being guided and led by some of the top mine finders, builders and operators. So that experience is, is key. I guess another um, point to address here may be that, um, you know, we're currently now uh, exposed in the company to gold exploration, uh, delivering on that promise of last year to our investors to get ourselves involved with a high quality uh, gold project uh, at sensible um, valuations. That's the important thing. Um, and we have our base metal portfolio. Um, some people might uh, wonder why we, 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 we're prepared to keep those in the, in the same company. I think that's an important differentiator here in that collectively the team has a huge amount of depth and experience, both in gold, obviously from the B2 connection, but also in, in base metals. So, you know, that's why we feel very comfortable being able to advance these exploration and development projects within, um, within B metals, certainly as they grow, um, at the opportune time, there might be potential for um, for separation of certain assets at the right time, which could in itself create another value accretive event for, for investors. Access to capital has always been possible, importantly at sensible valuations. Um, and I think that's partly testament as well to our sensible deployment of those funds, um, you know, even when the markets are, are running hot, as to a degree they are at this um, at the very moment. Um, and uh, extensive uh, international network, uh, which brings in a huge amount of deal flow uh, on projects and potential new new opportunities for the uh, company, which is only going to expand now with the closer relationship to uh, B2 Gold. We are now, as Derek mentioned, uh, well financed to deliver on our near-term catalysts and growth, which include rolling out of the um, gold exploration in Japan results coming through from that uh, exploration. The um, B2, uh, sorry, the um, South Mountain project in, in Idaho, where we, we're working now hard on completing a PEA study by uh, September this year. And also now, while we've um, shared some risk, bringing in that JogMec investment, still exposing our investors to that uh, tier one targeted um you know copper exploration in in the zambian copper belt um and as we all know at this time you know copper is a real good commodity to be to be um to be exposed in at this uh, at this moment so that i think really sums up where we are and um actually a lot of updates there uh since our last webinar three months ago but really very positive steps on um you know all two two of our existing projects now bringing in the third gold acquisition, bringing with that an excellent uh, cornerstone investment um, from B2 Gold. So we're really excited about the way that uh, we're starting to get traction, as Derek mentioned, with some of the, the large funds coming out of the US and elsewhere. Um, and I think this is a really great time for people to start getting involved, more engaged with uh, B Metals as we take the company forward in the uh, coming months. Great. Well, thank you so much, John and Derek, for the presentation. Um, now we're going to open the floor to Q&A. So if you do have a question, please submit it now. Um, the first question we got emailed in is, what is the significance of today's update resource estimate with respect to your plans at South Mountain? 
Yeah, good question. Thanks, Dasha. I think really as we as we touched upon, one of the important things there is the um, is the way that we've shown um, through two rather you know limited meter campaigns of drilling, but we've had a significant expansion to the resource. We've obviously learned a lot about the geology, how to explore it from underground. Um, that all bodes well for the future that we can further expand the resource in the in the future. And importantly, while we've expanded the resource, we've also maintained the high grade nature of the mineralization. You know, in the um, massive sulfide alone category, what we're seeing in the uh, DMEA zone is like a two and a half gram uh, gold credit now, which is uh, an uplift from the, the historical um, resource estimate. So, you know, we're really understanding the geology. We're really building that resource base uh, and we're showing that we can do that. And I expect that to continue in, into the future. Great, thank you. Um, Tom has a question. He's asking, so CRDs are seen in Arizona to great value with zinc, silver, and lead. Are there any carbonate replacement deposits in Idaho near your property? Um, this is the one that, um, you know, it's a good question. This is the one that's uh, known in, in that area. There's obviously a lot of potential to expand on a um, sort of a semi-regional regional scale. Um, and, um, you know, as, as uh, Tom rightly says, you know, these deposits can be of significant value. Um, there's a lot of work we need to do on the, um, the age of the mineralization. We've got ideas on that. Um, but the, the important thing is that style of mineralization is likely to grow on us. Um, and these systems generally have uh, extensive roots. So once you get onto one of these things, it generally will get bigger on you. That, but the, um, but there's still, we have to keep to the objective. The important thing is to get this one into production at the appropriate early time, and then, uh, you know, sequentially expand from that point. Got it, thank you. He's also asking, um, in regards to Japan, what is the synergy here in terms of the three properties? Yeah, I think basically in Japan, the um, we're looking at the same style of mineralization from a geological point of view. Uh, low, low, generally low sulfidation uh, epithermal deposits. Those similar style of, style of deposits in well known in Nevada, in the US, for example. Um, similar style of mineralization, most likely uh, closely um, age related also. And the important thing is, you know, the, the potential for high grade underground mining with a relatively um, small scale um, environmental footprint. Thank you. Um, Martin is asking, why aren't you mining South Mountain, especially with the high price of copper? He's saying it's the time to mine, not to do more studies. Well, it's, a, <laughs> it's always a good question. Um, you know, obviously that um, that is sort of our objective to fast track this project as much as possible. Uh, but some of the key parameters, there's not really, um, there's not too many shortcuts in our business and people who do take shortcuts generally come on stuck very quickly. Um, as well, you know, so we need to complete the right amount of metallurgical test work, really understand that metallurgy uh, before we start designing and building a plant. Very expensive things to um, design incorrectly and then have to refit thereafter. So it's a question of getting the right balance between aggressively pushing this project forward, which we are, and demonstrating we can do, but also getting the um, ticking the boxes on some of the technical questions. Of course. So Patrick is asking if you can summarize once more how your cash will be spent on the geographically far apart assets and how far that cash will take you. Um, asking, He's asking, are the 11 million including the current um, WTS exercise? No, oh, warrant. Warrant. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in, in terms of um, deployment of the um, of the funding, we've got a, an approximately uh, a two million dollar US dollar program uh, planned for the next twelve months in uh, in Japan, following up on those on these exciting uh, gold projects. Um, we're in the process of rolling out a one point five million dollar uh, copper exploration program in in Zambia. Um, as the uh, way that funding comes in from Jogmec, that will be. Uh, an approximate 50-50 split between um, between Jogmec and ourselves for this year. Um, and then we're busy investing about $1.5 million into the current uh, PEA study at, um, at South Mountain. With the uh, current, um, you know, with the current uh, cash situation that we're in, 
you know, we're certainly well covered for the next um, next year um, and likely further than that. But, uh, you know, depending on the results of the PEA study from South Mountain, we will look at uh, the next uh, sensible steps there in terms of a potential um, feasibility study, a very focused uh, feasibility study, for example, um, you know, with a with a short time time path then into um, into potentially construction, given continued positive uh, technical results. Great. Um, so with B2 Gold as a new quarter, cornerstone investor, will they also be investing to advance your base metal projects? Yeah, obviously uh, B2 has come in at the um, at the equity level. Um, so by by default, they are investing across the portfolio of um, of projects. Um, and obviously, depending how we take some of those projects forwards, um, you know, there might be an element of uh, debt and equity funding on the more advanced projects, for example. But at this time, they um, they certainly appear very comfortable to invest in the in the portfolio of projects. Obviously, being very close to them, um, seeing how they've evolved, um, and uh, being comfortable that they really, you know, they're really valuable things to uh, continue to explore and uh, develop. All right, thank you. Um, Diego is asking, what vision does B-Metals have in areas of South American Andes where B2 Gold has worked, for example, Colombia? Yeah, we look at opportunities, um, you, know, um, you know, as they come up uh, across, across the world. You know, we went uh, two years ago, we were down in uh, Chile, for example, looking at opp potential opportunities there. We'll continue to look at um, opportunities, uh, but, you know, the focus for the next while is to bed down the new acquisitions in uh, in Japan and, and get our you know current portfolio advanced um, but we're, we're certainly open to looking at the right um, fit of projects for us they have to be projects that fit with the company where we are at the moment in terms of our growth profile and um, you know make sure we make sure we're getting them at um, at a good valuation for for the current investors Thank you. Um, Patrick is asking, will drilling in Japan have less COVID related, related capacity constraints um, in regards to turnover time, essays, and does the core go out of country? Well, the samples historically have gone, uh, gone out. So they get um, the sort of um, first phase of obviously cutting the samples and then they get shipped generally to, uh, generally to Vancouver. Um, you know, the, there has been some constraints on the current COVID situation uh, in Japan. Importantly, through the acquisition, we have uh, we are very uh, pleased to inherit the uh, current staffing in uh, in Japan itself. So we have a functional team uh, on site. Um, we've managed to do some uh, reconnaissance work in the last month on some of the properties that haven't had so much attention in the past already, um, and we're in the process now of uh, rolling out some. Um, early stage um, outcrop and uh, potentially stream sediment sampling on a number of the properties ahead of the real focus, which uh, which will be um, probably drilling at the Kato project. Great. So what is your monthly burn rate when you are not drilling? Well, the uh, corporate overhead is, um, you know, we've got that really nicely under control by design. Um, most of our project teams are based in the regions. Uh, a project like our Pengeni project, uh, for example, in uh, in Zambia, our burn rate on that project when we're not active in the field is five thousand dollars a month. So it doesn't come much uh, cheaper than that just to keep that um, project uh, ticking over. Um, our corporate overhead is in the order of um, eighty to one hundred thousand US, um, you know, per annum, which are uh, pretty modest considering the spread of projects we have. And the value that we've um, we've achieved and invested in the last uh, three years. All right, and um, last question here: How would you rank your current assets in order of priority? Yeah, that's a good question and a, and a difficult one to answer at this point in time. I mean, um, you know, there was a strong sense uh, from investor base and um, from ourselves that we wanted to get exposure to gold exploration. Um, and, um, you know, we've done that through now the Japan, um, the J Japan acquisition. So, you know, we're really excited to get going with that project. Nonetheless, you know, we've also got the um, high grade um, South, South Mountain property, which is really advancing nicely. The more, more sort of um, advanced project that could get into production, probably the quickest or definitely the quickest of all our properties at this point in time. 
And we can't forget the tier one focused um, copper exploration in, in Zambia, you know, a part of the world that's really also attracted, um, you know, the majors are in there, companies like Rio Tinto, First Quantum, Anglo-American. Um, interestingly enough, we've acquired, um, you know, our, our whole portfolio of projects, Japan now and Zambia, in areas where, you know, the majors are really interested, which shows you that they see the real big upside in those regions for the gold in, Zam in um, Japan and the copper in uh, Zambia. That's great. Thank you so much. So thank you so much to uh, both of you, John and Derek, for taking us through your presentation and the Q&A session. And thank you for everyone who joined us today and submitted questions. If you think of another question after the summit, we will be sending out a short survey where you have the opportunity to leave your contact details and the B Metals team will be happy to follow up with you directly. And you can also um, some, find more information on their website at bmetalscorp.com. So I'll pass it back to you, John and Derek, for the final word. Thanks very much, Dasha. Very good to, for you to host another presentation. And um, you know we look forward to keeping um, more of these uh, going forward as we ratchet up our marketing on the base of these um, you know, real positive results that we're seeing coming out of B-Metals at this time. Mm -hmm.